and greetings from Teshua Community. I am Ima Rafael. I know I haven't been here for a minute or better, but I'm here today bringing you great tidings of joy from the Torah truth. Yes, daughters, we must be instructed by aged women that have been an example and a pattern of the Torah life. You can't help anyone if you haven't lived this Torah truth. If you're not striving every day and correcting your ways, you can't help anyone else. So as over the many years I have been instructed by Rayak Dawi how to be an example, because he has been an example, as he has followed the Torah and has, as he has followed Yahshua HaMashiach. So I'm only coming to the daughters those that are saved, unsaved, those that just want to hear what I have to say. I'm only going to give you the scripture that Rayak Dawid has given me to share with you all on this day. Hallelujah. So this evening we want to talk about the beautiful daughters of Torah. And I know your first question is say, well, I'm a beautiful daughter of Torah. Daughters, if it is not written, and if you are not following what is written, then you are not a beautiful daughter of Torah. But the only one that can change that is you. And it starts today by hearing. We must hear. You must hear from righteous leaders that are striving to keep this truth. We're striving every day. Yahshua has come in the volume of the book. And we must follow Yahshua every day of our lives. I know sometimes people say, well, this is a hard walk. No, it's not as easy. You're free of the cares of the world. You're free of the fashions and the design and everything that the world is doing, their parties, their celebration, their anniversaries. You've been made free from all of that. Yes, I may look like a little southern country daughter, but I told her, yeah, that's how I want to look. I don't want to look like the world. I want to look set apart. Wherever I go, and we do go out quite often, I don't look like anybody else. And they wonder, they question, is she a Muslim? No, I'm not. I'm a follower of Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. So the words that polish us as daughters to become a gem of beauty, you have to be called daughters. It's Yah that does the choosing. Before you entered into your mother's womb, Almighty Yah knew whom he would choose. If you're always stumbling and struggling, you can't never get it right, you're nasty, you're up, you're down, you want to look like the world, then Yah has not called you. He said, many are called, but few are chosen. There's only going to be a few that will never struggle with this truth. There's only going to be a few to say, Yah, wherever you call, but wherever you call me, I'll go. I'll be disciplined. I'll hear my head. I'll be obedient to my ish. That's what Yah is looking for in these last and evil days. And daughters, the days are evil. They're evil. Women sleeping with women, men with men. The days are evil. Evil. You wonder well, if my daughter will ever get a husband. If my son will ever get a wife. Well, daughters, we just got to trust you. We've got to just, we're going to wait for the Yashak of Almighty Yah. We must learn to trust Almighty Yah. I've been young and now I'm old. But I've seen the hand of Almighty Yah. I've seen people come and they're all excited. And then they fall by the wayside once one little trial comes up. We must arm ourselves likewise. Because there are going to be many trials in our life. That to prove you. To prove your love for your sure Hamashiach. Hallelujah. So the first daughter we want to talk about. That is written in the book as the uh, 
Zakane Vitamin taught on last Wednesday. It's in the Bible. Her name is Abigail. And Abigail means my father is joy. And daughters, it's so important that we don't get out of the will of Yah, that we marry and bring forth children. Not bring forth children and then marry, or bring forth children and never marry, because the father is the strength of the household. He's the one that leads and guides you in truth. Even though he's following the messenger, he is the ruler in that home. And can I tell you, as Rayak has always said, he's the one that taught me how to love, how to care. The way he would love the people of Yah, I would watch. How he would counsel people, I would watch. And I say, Yah, I want that too. I want to be able to do what, and I want to see the need as he sees it. When he looks at a drunkard on the street, or a woman that has no care, she's just going from pillar to post, he always say, why is that woman that way? Why is that man a drunkard? Did he get fired? And then his wife left it. He lost his... So those are things we have to weigh out. And we have to understand to the deepest depth the way Almighty Yah understands. See, he knew that we needed Yahshua HaMashiach. It was going to only take him. He went from the beginning of the book to the ending of the book. He fulfilled the book. He suffered greatly so that you and I could be saved. So that you and I could enter into the kingdom. So that you and I can be free from our sins and the bondage of this walk of life. Can I tell you, daughters, that Torah, when you read the Torah every day, it helps you to stay focused. Studying the word and hearing it will keep you in touch with Yahshua HaMashiach. So it's something you have to do. No, I don't study like the messenger, Rayak Dawi, but I do study. I do study, but not like him. He goes in debt. And can I tell you, even if you've never heard it before, once he brings it to our attention, it's like you know it's right, and it's right for us to do. And the reason I have a little bit of understanding that I do have is because I never did fight against the truth. I never did kick and say, I don't like this, I don't like that. Even the scripture says, who is my family? Who is my mother? Who is my father? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? 99.9% .9 of this world, they have a problem with that. But he said, those that keep the commandments and the will of Almighty God. That's my mother, my brother, my sisters. I'm more comfortable, and this is no lie, with the people that live here in this community than I am with my sister. My sister lives in Atlanta, Georgia. There's no connection, there's no bond. She's afraid to call me because she knows I'm gonna correct her about her actions and the things that she performed. She knows I'm gonna correct her. So there's really no bond there with us. But the daughter that's on the other side of this camera, there's a bond, a great care. Her children are my grandchildren. They're mine. The children that are here, they know me as granny, or sometimes they may call me nanny. And they know I'm going to correct them, and then they know I'm going to do right by them. They know if you want something, you can ask nanny, because she'll get it for you. So that's what Yah wants all the daughters. He wants us all to be like that. And it's, you have to strive every day. You have to empty all the vile and evil things about you. Not about your neighbor, your sister. Your, everything is vile about you. You got to get it out. You got to eradicate it. It starts here in your mind how you love Yah. You can say you love him. But if your actions say something else, then you don't love them. If it doesn't add up with Torah, then you don't love Almighty Yah and His precious Son, Yahshua HaMashiach. 
So let's get back to this scripture. Abigail, my father is joy. And Abigail, thy we took her, and he married her after the death of Nabal. And we want to start with 1 Samuel 25, verse 3. Now the name of the man was Nabal, Abigail's husband, and she was a woman of good, tough, and great understanding. And she had a beauty about her. Her countenance was beautiful. But it says she had a great understanding. So that means she was prudent. She had understanding like no other woman. She was shapely. When it says a beautiful countenance, she was shapely in body. Her figure, her appearance. But her husband, Nabal, was a hard and cruel man. And he was evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. Now this man, with his beautiful wife, don't you think, not only, he knew it, everybody else knew it too. Her understanding of Torah set her apart from the world. Wherever she went, not, not just because of a shapely body, but because of the understanding she had here. How she carried herself, how her words were few. You know, one thing that the women, we as women, we need to study to be quiet. Just study to be quiet. Over these many years, I've learned so much just by being quiet, just by hearing not speaking my opinion or can you do it another way, just by hearing. You can truly be blessed richly by hearing this truth and just observing others. You don't always have to speak. You say, well, I don't know this. Now. If you just listen, just listen and observe, you'll understand by and by. It says, Abigail, she was a woman of good understanding. Let me examine that phrase, good, tough understanding, what it takes to gain this kind of understanding. See, today you think if you go to college and you get a master's degree, you have this great understanding. But no, daughters, that's not how it goes. I want to go to Psalms 111, verse 10. Listen carefully. The fear, the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments and his praises endure forever. The fear of Yah. Can I tell you, daughters, you know how you know you fear Yah? You hate your sin. And you know that He has created you to lift up praises and condolences unto Almighty Yah. Because He's done a great and magnificent thing when He makes you free from your sins. When you understand the power of that, that's how you know you have the fear of Yah. When you do someone wrong, Right away, the fear of Yah will convict you. When you're laboring with the, uh, the sisters, and you know you should have stayed and you left, you don't have the fear. Working together, caring for each other, is the fear of Almighty Yah. When you don't want to uh, do your responsibilities, you're always complaining, you're never happy, but going to Walmart excites you. Going to Sephora excites you. You don't fear Almighty Yah. The power of life and death is in the hand of Almighty Yah. When you understand that you know it doesn't take much, the Yah could crush you. When you breathe, it's Yah that gives you the breath of life. So that's how you know you fear Almighty Yah. 
That's how you know you have tough understanding. Because that one that has created you has made you magnificent. In order to have understanding, we must keep the commandments of Almighty Yah. If you break one, you're guilty of them all. If you break one, you're guilty of them all. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Keep the, sa the, seventh, the seventh day, the Shabbat of Almighty Yah. We keep it with a purpose. We rest. We honor Him on that day. You honor Him every day. But the Shabbat of Almighty Yah is set apart that we may come and hear the truth. When we go into the tabernacle on the Shabbat, I'm looking for Almighty Yah. I'm looking for, for Him. And I want to hear from Him that it may keep my mind stable. It may give me strength to stand in these wicked days. So, daughters, that's how you know you have the fear of Yah and you have wisdom because you're striving every day to keep the commandments of Almighty Yah. And, daughters, can I say, so you can't do it for one week then fall off a week or two, then try to redeem yourself, and then you fall off three more weeks. It's like a just, you're just stumbling over your feet. You have no understanding of what this truth is about. And that's when, you know, I see people stumble like that. I know they don't know the book. It's in the book how we should live from day to day. It's in the book. It is written. It is written. I want to go, great understanding comes by growing in truth. This will produce your heart. The only thing that produces great understanding. So great understanding comes by growing in truth. This is the will that produces your heart. It will produce a righteous heart here. And it will produce great understanding. So you have to grow. Every day you should look at your growth. You know, in the evening, that's when I really spend time before going to bed with Almighty Yah, my thoughts, and what I could have done better, and how tough Yah was for to me to get me through the day. I ponder on those things. And how I'm glad to be in a place the people of Yah must be together. That we can grow by and by. That we strengthen each other. We can pray for each other. And we can help each other press until the end. We're in the press. When you're out on your own, there's nobody there to correct you. You do what you want to do. And most of the time, you just you and your man, you, are, or you, your man, and your children, you're going to always think you're more righteous than that one over there. Because there's nobody there to correct you. That's why the people of Yah should live together. That we may help each other. It's a daily walk before Almighty Yah. You have to examine your thoughts all day, every day. And you must keep His commandments. Let's go to Proverbs 14 and 29. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. But he that is hasty of Ru'ah exalts folly. So, doors, we have to even work that out, too. You know, I used to be, I would get angry quickly. But when I was young, I said, a young girl, if you didn't do things the way I thought you should have done, I would be angry, then I wouldn't talk to you for a while. I just, when I wouldn't even, I didn't even want to be bothered with you. I didn't even want you part of my company. So we have to understand those are things that are not pleasing before Almighty God. Anger resteth in the bosom of a fool. So when you get angry quick and nobody can't correct you, you don't have any understanding. That's why you hear that age, the age women here, they have set an example. They can't instruct you. You talk and smart and you don't want nobody to say anything to you. That's not of you. It's not. I don't care what you think. I don't care what your mama tell you. Your grandma is wrong. When you're being instructed, Lord, you should study to be quiet 
that you may hear, hear the matter, examine you, even, I'll say, me. If I was saying something about you and I was wrong in my application, can I tell you, by and by, y'all would let me know. Yes, he will. But instead of you raising your voice, just be quiet. If I'm wrong, y'all will show me. Almighty Yah is righteous. And not even me will get away with anything. And I'm not, I want Yah to judge me. I want Almighty Yah to correct me. Because I want to go into the kingdom. I don't want to have any hidden agenda that is evil against Almighty Yah. So that's why I practice every day. Practice every day to live righteous. To be kind. To study to be quiet and to hear before I speak. Hallelujah. So we can't be hasty in our spirit. We cannot do it. We want to gain good, tough understanding. And you say, how do we do that? Proverbs. 3 and 3. Let not kindness and truth forsake you. Bind them about your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Tough understanding. You learn to be kind. Everybody knows how to be kind. You know, growing up as a child, you learn to be selfish. You learn to just look out for your brothers and sisters and nobody else. That's how you do it. Somebody do your brother wrong, you make sure you take care of that. Somebody do your sister wrong. Can I tell you, yeah, I was a little fighter growing up. Because my mother, took, if anybody does anything to your little brother, you make sure you handle that. Nobody should jump on your sister. You make sure you handle that. So I watched out. I didn't watch out for my big brother, too. And Ray kind of had a big sister. And someone had jumped on my big brother, and she came to tell me. Well, can I tell you in the process of her coming to tell me, she had broke her toe. Because she said nobody was going to jump on my brother because she liked my brother much. And she kicked the other boy till she broke her toe. So we look out for each other, those that we like. Those that, you know, we kind of favor more than anybody else. But we have to learn to show kindness to all. To the homeless woman on the street, to the homeless man on the street, you gotta learn to show kindness. And you bind them about your neck. You write them on the table of your heart. I've been young and now I'm old. And even in this little small place, with just a few sisters, a whole came here. You know when a daughter's doing right, you know when she's not doing. And can I tell you, why would I even think to just be mean to a sister for no reason? You know, there are people like that. But if you're following the Torah truth, you can't be like that. And it will trouble you sore. Hallelujah. I want to go to Proverbs 3 and 4. It says, so shall you find favor and tough understanding in the sight of Yahweh and in the sight of man. So when you show kindness, like I've seen with Rayak Dawe, when you show kindness, men will show kindness back unto you. Being in this place, I've seen many men come to do works here for us. And because of Rayak's kindness, they don't charge you the full price. They just give it to you because they love to see a community setting like this. People living and dwelling together in unity. So they're impressed with that. Because you know, knowing most of the time they say black people can't live together. Well now, we, you've been proven a liar because we live together. And our life is beautiful here. It is beautiful. It's quiet. The children out playing. And it's still quiet. It's peaceful. You hear the birds singing. So this life is a beautiful life. And I'm happy in my place, being in this place. A beautiful countenance 
the expression of these types of daughters. So I want to go to Yasher, Yasher chapter 15, verse 3, and Abram and Sarai were walking at the border of the brook Mizraim, and Abram beheld his wife Sarai, that she was very beautiful. Did you hear that, daughters? She was beautiful on the outside, and she was beautiful within. And Abram said to his wife Sarai, Since Yahweh has created you with such a beautiful countenance, I am afraid that the Egyptians might slay me and take you away. For the fear of Yah is not in this place. Abraham knew how beautiful his wife was. And he knew being in a wicked place where they were in Egypt, they would have slain him. And the king would have taken her. She was so beautiful that the king wanted her. She was not like any other daughter. She was not. She didn't run a mile. She, didn't want to sh she wasn't showing everybody what she knew. She was just quiet. Manasseh was her, okay, let me go to uh, Judith. Let me go to the book of Judith, chapter 8, verse 7. And we're talking about Judith. And Manasseh was her husband, and he died. So she was an, a widow that needed help in the time of harvest. So Judith, 8 and 7, she was also... She also had a goodly countenance. She was very beautiful to behold. And her husband, Manasseh, had left her gold, silver, men servants, man's maid servants, cattle, land, and she remained there in her own town. She had a beautiful countenance, just as Sari did. And in the town she was in, there was much wickedness. It says, and there was none that gave her an ill word. And she feared Yahweh great. She was beautiful within, and she was beautiful on the outward appearance. She was known for her faithfulness and her labor of love. She was kind. She was considerate. When her words came, they were words of wisdom and great understanding according to the Torah. So, doors, when you examine yourself now, you got to meet up with these women. When people speak highly of you in this reference, they know that truly you are a righteous woman of Almighty God. So, if you don't meet up to these women, these two we've already read about, then you're falling short. But only, the only one that can change that is you. The only one that can change that is you. When does it start? Now. It starts now. You want to please Almighty God. So it starts now. You examining you. Don't worry about what the other woman is doing. Just make sure you're doing what is righteous. Hallelujah. It says, what is this beauty and what it represents? Let me share something with you today. Let's go to Psalms 27 verse 4. Dawid speaks, one thing have I desired of Yahweh, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of Yahweh all the days of my life to behold, to behold the beauty of Yahweh and to inquire in his great tabernacle. So he's letting you know that Almighty Yah's tabernacle is great. And there is a beauty there that you want to behold, that you want to partake of. 
that we knew that. So he speaks this, is that this is what we all should desire. The world doesn't desire this. When you're out there in the world, the only thing you're impressed with is cars and having a bigger house, who has the largest pool, what organ, organization you belong to. That doesn't mean anything with Almighty God. He wants us to live a simple life. He wants us to be set apart. Kodesh in your dress borders. Yes, the way we dress here is simple. We cover ourselves. Our body's only meant for our husband to see. So no, no one, no man should be looking down in your cleavage. No man should be looking at your buttocks and your two tight pants or your private parts in front. Those are the things you need to cover. No man needs to see your big, if you got big beautiful legs, keep them for your ish. No other man should see that. So we cover ourselves. That's why, we, and another thing, we cover our heads. We must pray all times. You say, well, why, when you go out, if you're in an accident and your, your head's not covered, how are you going to pray? How you, so if you cover your head at all times, you don't have to worry about that problem. You can pray at all times because your head is covered. That's why we cover our head. Oh, I want to go. We daughters must dress in the clothing of beauty, the works of our hands, as daughters of Zion. So there is a dress. The dress is very important. The dress, the way that the daughters of Zion dress, is very important. We're not trying to show nobody our shape. When you start to get old like me, you don't want nobody to see your shame. Well, you don't like who I love who I am. I know my place in y'all, but I don't want nobody to see my shame. So let us go to Psalms 90 verse 17. It says, And let the beauty of Yahweh, our Abba, be upon us, and establish you the work of our hands, upon us. Oh, confirm the work of our hands, our labor, working with our children, our speech. Everything about us must be Kodesh before Almighty God. That's where the beauty comes in. When you learn how to talk, when you know what to talk about. And can I tell you, we must exalt Torah every day of our lives. Yes, daughters, we talk about cooking, we talk about crochet. We talk about sewing. The daughters in Torah, those are the things that they did with their hands. My daughter's into the making pound cakes now. No, I don't eat pound cakes. I may taste it, but she's enjoying making pound cakes. That's what righteous daughters do. We learn how to cook and prepare excellent meals. Not only just for our children, but for the Aki. They enjoy, well, our, our brothers go out and labor hard. And I think they should have an excellent meal. No, not just a sandwich. Get in there and fry some chicken or bake it. But we should know how to prepare food. For even when we have guests, we want the people to enjoy the food. So when I train the daughters, I train them well. Yes, I said, okay, we're not putting it out like that. You should have added more salt. Okay, cut back on the salt. That's too much sugar. I critique everything. Yes, ma'am. Because I want it done right. For the people of Yah. Whatever you present unto Almighty Yah, these are Yah's people. So whatever you present to the people, you're presenting it unto Almighty Yah. Once you get that here, you take great delight in cooking. Even if you're on a job. When you come home from work, you want your husband to enjoy it what you prepare for him. Even sometimes you may be rushing to do it, you still want him to take great delight in what you have prepared for him. I know I do. I enjoy feeding Rayak. I enjoy feeding Rayak, Akio Wasada, Akio Shibi, Zakane Yaramaya, Zakane Benami. I take great delight in that. Akmakos, I take great delight in preparing food for those I give. 
Hallelujah. Look at Yahweh's beauty. Daughters, we represent this type of beauty. We want to go to Isaiah chapter 52, verse 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of Yahweh that brings tough tidings and publish shalom that bring tough tidings of tough things, that publish salvation, that says to Zion, Yahweh reigns. Hallelujah. The mountaintop speak, Yahweh reigns. So we must always, when you look at the mountaintops, lift your voice and praise Almighty Yah, because it's Yah that has created those mountaintops. He brings great tidings to his people that we may hear and understand this truth. This song speaks of the love and the honor of the assembly, the house of Yahweh, and of us as his dwelling is in us. Yah dwells in you, right? All right. Psalms of Solomon, chapter 7. Verse 1, how beautiful are your feet with shoes, O prince, daughter, the joints of your thighs are like jewels, the work of the hands of a cunning craftsman. We that keep the commandments of Yah, we are the princesses of Yahshua Hamashir. There's no other woman like you, daughter. When you're keeping Torah truth, you're keeping the commandments of Almighty Yah, all of His statutes, you're striving and you're pressing every day to please Him. There's no one like you. Your beauty surpasses the beauty of every woman. Not because you put on makeup, because your discipline of this Torah living, it is our daily bread. It makes you beautiful daughters. We must understand that. The world has deceived us. The world has. We don't want to look like the world. We are set apart. Wherever you go, when you're keeping the commandments of Yah, even if you're in the produce section at Food Line, others know that there's something different about you. You must strive for perfection every day. You must know your place. You don't have to be heard. That's something we really have to work on. Study to be quiet. Work with your children. Teach your daughters to be quiet. And show them their beauty. Their beauty comes from obeying Torah. Truth. Daughters, we must also hear the preaching of truth. It will make our walk more beautiful as the one that teaches you. You must hear the righteous shepherd. When you hear, you will obey. Don't ever struggle with, I don't understand, or why did he say that? Just obey. It brings about a discipline in your life. You know, I know sometimes daughters think that the beauty is being slim. Well, if you have a discipline in your life, you don't need everything and everything inside. And, and one thing that we as daughters of Zion should stop doing, stop going to the restaurants. Prepare your own food. You don't know what they're putting in the food today. You must learn to cook and take a great delight in doing that. No, I don't let no other woman prepare food for me. I had an episode that happened almost, um, was it almost close to 30 years ago. We went to Africa. We were in Kenya. And there were at least two young women that would get up between the hours of 1 and 2 in the morning. And they were praying and crying out to Yah. So by the end of that week, I asked one of the daughters if it was her, and she told me yes. And she said, because Yah is so kind to me, 
She said, he's blessed uh, my husband with a job. She said, so we have food to eat. We have a little, you know, they had a little bit of clothing and a little roof over their head. And she was getting y'all towed off of that. And the little food that she would prepare every day for, they would have a little breakfast, not much breakfast. She would prepare him lunch and then they would have dinner together. And I'm saying if she can be thankful for that and all that I have living in America, that I get weird with praising y'all, say not so. From that trip. From that one trip, I never ate at another restaurant. I never. There was a time where on my anniversary, I would take Ray up out to dinner to a very nice restaurant. I didn't do McDonald's and her, I knew places like that. But one of the restaurants was called the Chateau. And it's in Charlotte, and it was on East Moorhead. We would only go there for our anniversary. But can I tell you, daughters, after that one trip to Africa, I say, yeah, my dedication to you is more than it's going out to eat. We have to get disciplined daughters in our lives. We're not cows. We shouldn't graze all day. We really shouldn't have no more than two meals a day. We have to discipline ourselves as the prophetess Anna did. They say she fasted daily. Fasting isn't a new thing on the market. We just don't like it because we don't like this, our tummy to growl. Let it growl. You won't die. Learn to drink the first thing in the morning. Learn to have a glass of water. That's how you do it. And then when the sun comes up, I said maybe when they say between the hours of 11 and 12, then have your first meal. We have to learn to be disciplined. It's not hard. It just takes a great love for Almighty Yah. And Yah, whatever it takes, I'll be willing and obedient. Hallelujah. My last verse, let me read from Romans chapter 10, verse 15. And it says, And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the message of Shalom and bring glad tidings of tough things to you and I. When you have a righteous messenger, daughters, learn to humble yourself, be quiet, hear, and receive. You know, Rayak is a righteous messenger. And when you question what he says, I've seen women rise up like that. When you question what the messengers say, you're calling him a liar. Well, I don't think it takes all that. Oh, I know there's another way. There's only one way. There's only one. Yahshua didn't send, I mean, Almighty Yah didn't send two sons. He didn't send three. He sent one. He sent one. And when he gives you a messenger that's practicing toward truth every day you see his life and you still rise up, then something's wrong with you. Not the messenger. Something's wrong with you. So we must hear the righteous messenger and we must transform our minds to this Torah life. It examines you completely, thoroughly up and down. Everything about you that's not right, Yah will show you when you hear the messenger. No daughters, he didn't send you, nor did he send me. I'm teaching this by the obedience of Rayak Dawi, and I'm only coming to the daughters of Zion, and I'm coming to those that don't know Almighty Yah. They may hear this and inquire. It's going to take more than the little that you're doing now. Daughters, it's going to take more than what you're doing now. Pick up the Torah every day. Study. You don't have to find anything to study. If you hear the messenger, then go back over the scriptures. Read it, dear. If it's the same one every day, read the same scriptures every day. 
until you go back into the bed again. We must hear the messenger. We must obey. We must discipline our mind. We must discipline this. And we must understand Yah is trying to save you. He's trying. So if you have the mind where you want to be beautiful, daughters, it starts with the fear of Yah and his great understanding. Don't be consumed with what the world is doing. Hell has enlarged itself without measure because of the wickedness of man and woman. I don't want to look like the world. There is a crown for those that endure unto the end. There was a crown of righteousness for all those daughters that wait patiently. Don't get ahead of Almighty Yah. Don't say I need to help him out because he doesn't need your help. He just needs your obedience. And when I see doors that don't obey, I know it's in the book. It's just you don't know the book. So in order to know the book, you must pick it up and study it daily. Yah is my strength. He is my help. Without him, I cannot stand. I can't make it. But I told Yah for your Yahshua HaMashiach. He has given me strength this day. And I give him total for all that he's done for me. I hover him much. And I hover him for being in a place like this. So daughters, when you hear this message, listen to it over and over. You might have forgotten something or you might have missed something. So go back over it. It's not that long. Just go back over it. And it will be strength to you. Yahweh Baruch you. I pray that you enjoy this. We're going to try to give a little more content. We're quite busy with school. We don't have that many daughters here. And we're kind of stretched out with preparing the meals, doing the cleaning, working with the children, and then being keepers of our little home. So we're quite stretched out. But when we can, we want to put up our young daughters. We have a daughter that's working with our daughters with the computers, showing them how to put up content, how to make banners, and they're excited about it. So we want to show you how they're learning how to cook in the kitchen. So that's something we should take great delight in, daughters. Learn how to cook. Take a great delight in that. No, I'm not putting you on the sewing machine this time. I'm putting you in the kitchen. But learn how to prepare lovely Kodash meals. Not just that you enjoy, but that others would take great delight in. So there's another part to this part, too. I'll get back with you. Maybe next week. Prayerfully next week. I want to be consistent in this because I don't want to lose anything. So may Yahweh Baruch you all have an excellent, excellent evening. I'm Ima Rafael Rea Dawes Isha. Shalom, shalom.